Hi everyone, it's Helen Eko Ajiru here from Women of Truth. Originally we called these conferences we did in Cyprus Yin Alithia. In ancient Greek it actually means women become the truth and it moved into this title of Women of Truth to really speak to an international audience because even today we have some incredible international uh, women with us on this journey, sharing their wisdom, sharing their personal truth. And today, Maria Kay, a very special friend, uh, is going to share with us the adventure of her own life because she took herself recently to the jungle in the middle of India with her family, her two kids, and has also now moved even more globally to the UK and is setting up her life in different locations. So a, wo a woman with a uh, really special intention to help entrepreneurs, individuals, corporations, groups to really upgrade and to get to this new level. We worked before together and we really love each other and respect each other and have had the chance to meet a few times in our home country, Cyprus. So we have a lot to share with you, but today we're going to really tune into Maria herself and welcome her, first of all, to this really special time where we can get to know her as the woman behind it all and her deeper truth that guides her. Welcome, Maria. It's so lovely to have you and the chance to chat again. Hello, my darling. It is absolutely a joy to be here. So I want to read this thing that you put on your Facebook because it's really nice to just share uh, with people something that I really like about you that it's hard to explain until I give an example like this one. And this thing that I love about you is how uh, you use the word to articulate uh, some very important messages and very deep teachings that the way you express them uh, call to people and call out to people in a really special way and I always respect that in in people I think it's powerful to be able to communicate with words in ways that can move people and on this one tweet you put mindfulness can be carried out anytime any place it is helpful to engage in practices such as meditation and breathing techniques though being still and silent often provides space for true feelings and thoughts to rise to the surface, to be felt, noticed, and understood. Some ideas that we all know and we all come across, but the way you put them together and express them is really inspirational. So tell us a little bit about what your work looks like on a day-to-day -day basis nowadays. Wonderful. My work is definitely... A big chunk of the day is sharing to my audience. I have a large number of people who really do look to my different social platforms for that pick me up, that tip, that tool, that reminder, that uh, sometimes that motivation, whatever it may be. So it's, it's a big responsibility that I've undertaken. So I'm on all the social platforms, Twitter and uh, Instagram and, and Facebook and I have um, much material out there uh, just for free you know and um, so that's intertwined with uh, coaching my online clients um, also whatever is in the calendar if it's a, a public talk or a, a consulting opportunity that I'm out doing uh, with various different people or, or individuals or groups um, but the beginning part of my day always starts with me. And it might sound a little self-centered, but I always say it's my board meeting with the, with the universal God or whatever terminology anyone prefers to use. But it's where I center myself. It's where I do what I have just described in that tweet, what you, the tweet that you just read out. Uh, just to feel anything that has gone unnoticed, to make sure that I am on track, to make sure that I am centered, to make sure that I am able to show up as the best possible version of myself in that day. Beautiful. So uh, you really call in people who want to upgrade and who want to go to that next level. Now, you, I'm sure, have had many moments in your life where you've upgraded and you've improved and you've increased or developed your, your skill set and your own uh, inner connection with your own self. So I'm just wondering what was a life changing experience for you that taught you the power of up leveling, upgrading yourself? And what was the, the biggest lesson in that? If you can explain it a bit more to us, what would you share with all the women watching, all the men watching? 
Okay, so there have been many, and I'm just trying to calculate which one would be, or, or feel into which one would be the most uh, conducive example right now. <clears throat> I'm going to go with the end of my marriage. Okay. So that was a period of time where I was, I have always been quite heavily into self-development and personal power and in my late teens I self-healed from quite severe eating disorders and it was Louise Hay's book that you know sort of got me through it and, and things like that but at the point of the end of my marriage and I was married at 21 and by the age of 29 the marriage was in utter despair and um with two children two ba little babies and so on and so forth um and so i'd sort of do i dove into life uh, as a businesswoman as a mother as a homemaker as a wife and had maybe fallen away from myself uh, and I'm sure a lot of us women can, can relate to that where we sort of, you know, we get stuck into life and, and we lose ourselves. I, I can't tell you how many times I've I've heard those words from, from clients or, or students. I, I just don't know who I am. You don't realise it at the time. So towards the end of my marriage, I... I was in a bit of a critical state. I had visited the, the, the doctor and was given what most people are, are given, a set of pills. You know, you don't feel good, here's some pills. And that for me was, was, was alarm bells. Because I feel that I've, I've been through pretty much, I'm not going to stretch and say every trauma that you can imagine in life by any means. But I feel that because of my purpose and who I'm supposed to be and how I'm supposed to help people, I've been, I've been able to touch or dive into each of the pools, many of the common pools, like depression and eating disorders and infidelity and bankruptcy. And you know, the list is pretty endless. But there's been this, almost like this buffer around me that when I get to a certain point, it's like something perks up inside of me and it's like, oh, okay, this is too far. <laughs> you know that's all you need to do in this arena of your life now you need to recalibrate and reset and and bring yourself back to yourself and take that breath again and it was at that moment when i came back from that doctor's visit with pills in hand i remember it vividly i stood in my kitchen with the pills on the counter and within a matter of seconds the decision was made that the pills were going in the garbage and the marriage was ending and it was it was very profound it it, it, it took now sadly for many men and women it doesn't go that way the pills will be ingested and they will be you know the prescription will be repeated and it will become part of daily life and there's no criticism judgment or anything other than um, an acknowledgement that it doesn't need to be that way so for me the fact that i was diagnosed with reactional depression was something that i didn't take at face value and i was able to call on my relationship with my inner self with my you know even though i was far removed from myself back that by that point in the marriage and in my life um it was something maybe undescribable that led me to decide and of course it took some time but it was the thinking that if things have gotten so bad that i need to take pills then something has to change something from the root something from from the actual scenario situation rather than medicating it and dampening it and avoiding it and 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 perpetuating the, the issue so for me that was a turning point and of course once that decision was made it wasn't an, an overnight change there was there were lots of ups and downs and all the in-betweens <clears throat> but what what developed from that period of time was the next phase in my ability to self-care the next phase in my ability to honor what I needed as well as being 
a great mother, a, a great partner, a great wife, a great daughter, whatever it was I needed to be a, a great coach. So definitely a turning point for me. And I always say to all my clients and students that I, I took the long route so you, you guys can take the shortcut. So that, um, that was a definite turning point. And at a young age, Maria, what uh, you knew about the world and what you thought about the world and what you ended up doing with your life, marrying into a relationship with the man, having the kids, and then coming to who you are now, uh, there's often quite a, a journey that we travel, all of us. So I'm just wondering what you would say to this younger part of you eight-year-old you back in your childhood looking at the world the way she did and what you see now what kind of advice would you give her for me this is obviously uniquely for me because we each have our own path and our own relationship with life and ourselves but for me it was it, it would be <clears throat> you are allowed to make your own decisions you are okay to trust your own desires and your own interests and passions and tendencies so definitely uh, a permission permission to be you beautiful so really giving her the opportunity to have your endorsement your uh, reminder that she can actually decide her own way in her life right? And so a lot of women, I imagine, uh, might resonate with that and might also have not known that at a young age. So when you look at all the women that you've worked with and all those that you've traveled alongside personally, socially, but also professionally, and looking at your own life through all of that and, and of course, you know, working so intimately with, with women and their struggles, what would you say is the biggest lie that women live with? What is the deceit, the illusion, the fantasy uh, that we sometimes buy into, even if it might not look like a positive fantasy, that's not really true? The, the instant one that comes to mind and heart is that we're not good enough. Mm -hmm. That there's always something more that needs to happen or change in order to, to be valuable and good enough and and of course as a as a success coach as an upgrade coach I have to what and I do 100% believe in the truth that there's always room for more like there's all there, there is always room we are, we are constantly evolving we are evolutionary by our nature mm -hmm. but the first piece must be right now I am enough and I can't stress that enough to to men and women but in my experience with women it is and it comes from all angles outside inside upside you know downside bit backwards forwards it, it, from the media from the um <clears throat> from the fashion industry from the beauty industry but it also comes from the very core of the evolution of, of women Right. So, you know, we, we can take it, that, you know, from all the way down and up the spectrum um, and speak about that. And one other thing to add is that to shift that, to transform that, it must come from within the woman. So many of us, and I've I'm guilty of it too because we're taught aren't we at a young age that once you get married and then you'll be enough get that degree and then you'll be enough get that you know that it comes from somewhere outside of us right that we're going to find it outside of the self in the world yeah and yeah validated will be uh certain that we we have this value so really undervaluing ourselves continuously. I totally agree. And it's interestingly enough, uh, quite conscious to most of the women that talk with me on these interviews, it seems to be one of the most common answers. And it, it's, it's actually a, a great thing to see because I think then it means it's out there, you know, it's no longer this deep, dark 
kind of secret that's lurking that actually a lot of women have seen it, they've worked through it, and they're out there now speaking about it. And here we are doing these interviews to share all of that. So if you are listening and you have been looking for a part of you outside of yourself, maybe you haven't realized that that's what you've been doing, but feel into this and know that this is something to really, really work deep on and to know that you have to almost exorcise, <laughs> extricate, expel, you know, take out, do some radical ritual to actually uh, release yourself from feeling unvaluable and not worthy. I think it's something that uh, we get trained into, like, uh, like you were saying, Maria, the whole beauty industry is very much feeding it. But us as women, we feed it ourselves inside ourselves. So maybe we can start thinking of ways. And of course, there are already many ways out there that are helping women see these deeper truths about their own wisdom, their own power. And I wondered what you think about them. There's so many uh, different movements rising up for women and we've had them going since the sixties, maybe even a bit before. What are your thoughts and feelings about the whole rise and awakening of women on the planet right now? And what would you add to that? What do you, what would you accent about it? And what do you, what do you relate to? Um, when it comes to all of this female empowerment? First of all, I think it's wonderful. We are in a beautiful time in history. There's still a lot of confusion, both within men and women, but that's okay, because out of confusion comes progress. If we think we know everything and everything is okay as it is, then we, we will struggle to progress but what i will say is that first of all as humans but as women we must become okay with the truth the idea that because i want something to change because i desire more because i desire an upgrade that is not me deeming myself or my past decisions or my current situation as wrong. So finding a way, and, it, and it's a bit, a bit of an opposite polarity. So sometimes, you know, we, 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 it, we're gonna wrap our mind around it a little bit. But oftentimes we, we want to stay as is because Acknowledging that we want change might mean that I was wrong someday, some time ago in the past. So finding our, yeah, it's big, it's profound, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it explains so much about why uh, some people, I mean, I think people are on this polarity. They either love change, which means they don't want too much stability, or they're on the side where they want so they mm. love stability and they're afraid of change. And it really explains that fear of change so much more deeply. So yeah, mm -hmm. listen, go ahead. So, so finding a way, whichever way suits the individual, I have many tips and tools, but finding a way to stay, get really grounded in the present, like be, get really make massive peace with what is right now. And then from there, take your steps to grow and rise and expand and evolve. Right. So it's rooting right the way into yourself and it's, it's, it's on a very intimate level. So that's one piece of it. The other piece that I've seen, having traveled all around the world and worked with women in Africa and women, women in India and with women all over the Western world as well, is we have to find a way and this is for all of us to honor the suffering that women go through without victimizing them without labeling giving you know giving them the final label of the victim because i've seen it in my own life if i've allowed myself to stay in that victim mentality for too long it's very it, it's almost like trying to walk through um you know quicksand or, or or you know really sort of sticky deep mud it's very difficult to, to rise 
And I, I teach, uh, I've, I've created and I teach an online course called uh, R R Rising Women. And, and, and we want to bring that energy of lightness into the transformation, the progression, uh, into the upgrades, into the changes. And we're not saying we ignore or we, or we negate what people have gone through by any means. We acknowledge, we make peace and we do do the work. But there has to come a point where we shift something in the mindset that re-empowers. It just brings back that power, that personal power. Not from uh, a, I want to destroy everything point of view, but more from when I am empowered, when it comes from within me, I am the most uh, impactful, influencing version of myself. As women, we are so, we have such immense ability to create. Beautiful. So honoring our struggle and pain and suffering without victimizing ourselves and or victimizing or resonating with the victimization that women have gone through. Mm -hmm. It's a really beautiful way to balance all of that because it's, I think, really a uh, a time where we have to try to integrate that so that we can truly take up power so i think it's a very special way to articulate it i will say that it's not easy this this has to be said you know we don't dance around the truth here we don't over spiritualize or you know make the, the, these deep transformations out to be anything but you know hard work it takes, it takes focus and work but with the right guidance yeah. and, and the safe you know a safe supportive space it's absolutely possible and and also you know i'm not i'm not naive to the intensity and the extremes at which big groups of women around the world are, are struggling and suffering so you know we have to acknowledge that as well uh, but when we at its very simplest form and really there are no exceptions we think about a truth they do apply and the mind kind of wants to argue it <laughs> argue against it but yeah re-empowering from the inside out so these days you're in the UK as we speak today, you go back to the jungle and the beautiful place of Ine myself where I know you live there in Goa. So uh, I'm also now wondering with all this uh, international life that you're living, what you're most passionate about now and what your projects are that you're working on now. How can people find out more about what you're doing and, and what can you share with us? Well, my current focus, my current baby that I'm birthing is the book, the first official book. There have been many different in different capacities, but um, this is the first official book. And by the end of this month, it will be done. And um, then we'll, you know, proceed the, uh, the sharing, the sharing, the getting, the getting it out there. It's a set of teachings that I've been developing for over 10 years. Um, and in essence, it's a, an honest and practical guide to transformation. And of course, we study what we study, we go through academia and all of that, the same with you, but the essence of this book is the intertwinement of the real life observations of clients students and, and myself and how we've been able to apply these theories and teachings and, and practical activities into life to upgrade and that's why i'm so excited because it will be a guide that somebody can pick up and integrate it into their life within weeks and days it doesn't take it, it's just not that complicated when you when you know so that's what i'm working on currently um uh, as well as some other behind the scenes stuff which we can share at another time <laughs> Fantastic. so it's a real practical toolkit and a guide that's going to be in the form of a book so people can follow or tune into your pages you're on all the social media so they can also find you maria k on all of that and we'll put the links on this video so if they want to know more about that practical guide, they can always 
follow and track you down. You can them. drop me an email if you want to pre-order. It's Maria at Upgrade with MariaK.com. That will be up and live in a few weeks. So yeah. Okay, fantastic. And so now three words from you: special, meaningful, uh, power words that for you mean. Uh, the most from all of your teachings and all of your guidance to the woman watching, those who never can, those who have uh, never seen a computer. It's like a prayer, like a call out and traveling through the vibrational airwaves. These three words have some really important way of touching others. So what would they be if they came from Maria K? What would your three words be? And then tell us. Three individual words. As you like, or connected or individual, as you like. Oh, talk about putting on the spot. Um, the sentence that drops in is what I want to say, first of all, you are strong. You are strong. Mm -hmm. And of course, I don't usually end my, my rants or my teachings with, with one sentence. So there's so much that I would want to say after that. But first of all, you are strong. And that is something that we each have the capacity to tune into and tap into. Mm -hmm. And we forget. We forget when in moments of despair or trauma. And I have one more. Go for it. And that is life loves you. Life really does love you. And to explain that in short is that anything and everything that comes our way or that we think we go through or that is happening to us is actually happening for us. Not an easy one to swallow, I know. But it is. Beautiful. I can feel into all of that with you share now and just feeling grateful that we have technology to connect through all these different trials and tribulations in the world and meet each other and all those watching meet you as well to really just impart uh, teaching wisdom knowledge wisdom uh, throughout all of uh, our um, intentions our life learnings we have this incredible strength and this is what I think you're reminding us in that statement and also that all the challenges are embedded with a kind of love that life has for us that we we do find it quite hard to know about and to remember and tap into and it's so great to have someone remind us and it's been you Maria Kay thank you so much for putting some time aside for us and we look forward to hearing more from you, supporting you, and maybe we'll catch you in the group as well, Women of Truth X Factor, where you can share more with us on Fridays, and we'll be very happy to uh, see you doing your wonderful work internationally, globally, and uh, it's, again, such an honor to, to spend time with you. Thank you so much. And My pleasure. Love to everybody. Sure. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm.